what have we covered till now right uh, let's just quickly go over what we have covered till now uh, so this is a continuation of our you know the azure active directory or identity and access management series that I'm, i've been covering uh, and we have uh, had yeah, i think this is the third session or maybe the fourth session and we have covered you know the different use cases that we in the past like cloud only identity uh, we have seen that demo same sign on where you sync your users along with the password and then you let the users use that uh, uh, you know username and password right uh, so that we have covered and uh, we have also covered a single sign on using azure ad connect pass through so that's still in public preview so i think the last session was uh, around azure ad connect pass through uh, and today we'll talk about you know adfs so if if you remember have you have you guys any of you guys uh, worked with any kind of federation endpoint in past like you know any federation technologies that you have used in your uh, current uh, role or you know in, in current organization okay uh, no need us so adfs is active directory federation services it's uh, uh, it's it's you know it's uh, runs as a service on windows server it's a free of cost offering from microsoft so if you already have a licensed version of windows server uh, you know 2012 r2 or you know 2008 also uh, microsoft has put in that as a service so what you need to do is you can install uh, that active directory federation service on that server now if you have a licensed version you don't need to pay anything extra so if you're a uh, organization and you don't have any federation infrastructure uh, and you know you don't have budget to spend a huge amount of money on some of the federation uh, technologies like siteminder cs siteminder or ping federate uh, you know these are the two uh, uh, well known uh, federation technology there are other also third party if you don't have money to spend on these are the licensed product that you have to buy and uh, uh, you know configure in your environment in that case you know what microsoft offers you is is a free of cost uh, solution to you if you uh, have a windows server uh, you can install active directory federation services so basically active directory federation services is what uh, uh, it gets installed as a service uh, or you know it's a, it's an added feature that that gets installed on top of a windows server so in today's demo, we'll see that uh, I have installed ADFS on a Windows Server 2012 R2 and configured that for providing single sign-on. Uh, so moving on to the, uh, uh, so let's see, I'll come to ADFS, right? So single sign-on with ADFS Federation. So we know what is single sign-on. And what's the difference between single sign-on and same sign-on, right? Uh, so same sign-on is when you have username and password. It's an identical replica existing in cloud and on-prem. And both have the same username, both have the same password. And user gets in a feeling. User, user get to, you know, it's very transparent to user. And user thinks that they are using the same user ID and password. But in reality, technically, they have two identities. Both identities have the same username and same password. Then we uh, also looked at uh, single sign-on using AD pass-through. Uh, AD pass-through is a new technology which Microsoft has introduced and which is you know, good for organization where they don't want to set up any federation endpoint and federation infrastructure, yet they want to leverage single sign-on. And uh, that is, you know, they want their users to use on-prem credentials uh, and authentication, both the credentials as well as authentication, both uh, should happen on-prem. So in case of same sign-on, you have the same credential, but the authentication happens in Azure. Whereas in single sign-on, when a user logs in, the authentication sequence, the flow is, it goes to Azure AD and then Azure AD sends back the user to on-prem 
uh, for authentication and user will use the same username and password what they use in their uh, regular uh, you know in, in corporate world now if the benefit of single sign-on is if you have user who are logging on from uh, from on-prem or from intranet or corpnet in that case it's it's a seamless sign-on which means that they don't have to even log in they don't have to even provide the username and password they, they open the browser they hit portal.azure.com or any of the cloud resource that you have and they automatically sign in with their you know logged on credential right so what happens is uh, that gives a that gives a very you know seamless experience to the user when they're logging from internet. However, when they're outside of internet, when they're sitting, you know, somewhere uh, in any island, and from there they they're trying to access with you know some other laptop. In that case, you know, they can still use their same uh, credential, but then they won't have that seamless uh, uh, authentication you know experience because you know they're not part of Cartnet. But uh, when they are inside the corporate, when they are in the intranet, you know, it automatically locks you on, which is, you know, a pretty cool feature of uh, SSO with ADFS. Uh, as I said, you can use ADFS as of today, you know, I, I know third party also supports ADFS, but since we are concentrating more on Azure, so you can use, you know, ADFS federation and credential with Azure. Uh, subscriptions or the portal that you log on and try to create your resources your uh, you know VMs or VSDs anything and everything that you log on to Azure portal you can also federate with O365 so you're now if you have if your organization is using uh, you know exchange online link online or SharePoint online or Yammer or OneDrive you know any I mean O365 is a suite of softwares that you have uh, for that, uh, you can also use Azure ADFS. So Azure ADFS is supported for both Azure O365. In fact, you know, it's for all Microsoft product. Uh, Microsoft also has something called EMS, Enterprise Management uh, Services, which lets you handle your mobile devices, MDM, mobile device management, Intune, and you know, whole suite of uh, software as a service which Microsoft has, you can integrate with all those services uh, with ADFS. Right. Uh, so before I move on, any any question? Me, he has any question? No question. Okay. Good. So, uh, when you install, you know, your Azure AD Connect and Azure AD Connect is the primary tool which lets you configure your user sign-in option. So user sign-in option like in cloud only identity or, you know, same sign-on or single sign-on with the pass-through authentication uh, or you want to use ADFS uh, for single sign-on. In that case, uh, you know, uh, you'll have to uh, use Azure AD Connect configuration wizard that lets you that, do that. So Azure AD Connect wizard gives you two options uh, to, you know, configure your uh, ADFS. So when you select that, you know, I want to use ADFS for my single sign-on, it gives you two options. One option is then you know, it will say that, okay, uh, you can select new. So when you say new, what happens is in this case, the Azure AD uh, Connect server will conveniently install and deploy the ADFS server and the ADFS or the web proxy server for you. So if you are if you already hadn't any infrastructure uh, ADFS and you want to install with this new, you know, the Azure AD Connect, Azure AD Connect can do it automatically for you. Obviously, it will, it, it will ask you for all those parameters which are required to set up your ADFS form. So that's one option. The second option that you get is if, let's say, if you already have ADFS installed in your environment, like in my case, you know, I did that installation beforehand. In that case, you know, it gives the option of selecting the existing form. So what will happen is, uh, in this case, uh, you know, it, it, it expects that, you know, your Azure or sorry, your ADFS is already pre-configured and set up with proper URLs and you know uh, proper redirect URL and also it is properly configured along with the certificates, right? 
So it depends on how it is, how is your environment. Either you can select new or you can select existing form. In my case, you know, uh, the installation that pretty much I have done is I have installed ADFS first. And you know, there is, a, if time permits, probably we will go through the ADFS installation once again. Otherwise, you know, I already have it set up, but I will just show you how it was set up. But you have two options. Either you can, uh, you know, let I really connect, create a new instance of ADFS form for you, for you know, to make use of this SSO, single sign on with ADFS, or if you already have ADFS, for example, if you set up ADFS for O365 or Microsoft Intune or you know, Enterprise Management Services, in that case, you can select existing form. And you can install it, you know, 2008, 2012, R2, uh, and 2016 as well. In 2012 R2, what Microsoft has done is uh, they have renamed the, uh, so ADFS has two components. I will, you know, uh, in the next slide, I will talk about the components that we have. Uh, but two components, so the Microsoft has tweaked the name a little bit and separated the role in 2012 R2. Otherwise, you know, uh, almost it's the same. So with the uh, 2012 R2, the version of ADFS is ADFS version 3. And prior to that, you had ADFS version 2 and you know, older version. So you can uh, install on you know any operating system of your choice starting from 2008 uh, up to 2016. In, in this demo, I have used 2012 R2 to install ADFS. Some of the you know the requirements that you have uh, when you install uh, a new form of ADFS is you need uh, two web two servers essentially. Uh, but you know, uh, one one year where you will have a federation server running, so which will be intranet facing, which will be sitting on on inside inside intranet, it's not exposed to internet. So any uh, you know intranet user logging on, they talk to this federation server and you know get authenticated and uh, go to the single sign on. The second is web application proxy, which sits in the DMZ, which is exposed to internet, which securely communicates. Uh, to your federation server which is sitting in internet zone over port 443 and this web application proxy is where user will connect to when they are outside of uh, uh, intranet when they are coming from out uh, from internet and trying to uh, authenticate uh, the finally you will also need an uh, SSL certificate you know with PFX so PFX means you need the private key because this is the SSL certificate that is used to encrypt the token so you know when you uh, go with uh, any certificate you know that you install uh, so there's a communication happening between the ADFS and Azure AD so what happens is ADFS you know when it authenticates it it creates a token and passes that token back to Azure AD now that token cannot go unencrypted because of security reason we all know the security is paramount important so that token has to be encrypted so this is where SSL certificate is one of the mandatory requirement uh, to install ADFS so if you really want to install ADFS you need to have an SSL certificate and that certificate is used to encrypt the token uh, that you know uh, that gets passed on when the user gets authenticated from on-prem domain controllers and obviously that you know when you uh, request the SSL certificate uh, you guys if you're not talking you can mute yourself that will help thank you uh, so this SSL cert that you know you will have to request make sure that SSL cert matches the name of your ADFS uh, form name now this ADFS form name uh, it doesn't have to match the server name. You can have uh, any name that you can have. Uh, this, for example, you can have ADFS dot your domain name, or you can have FS dot your domain name. And you know this can be sitting behind the load balancer, and this you know this uh, uh, URL is mapped to the web, and the behind the web you can have one to multiple servers, which gives you high availability. So essentially, what happened? If you have one server goes down, the second server is there to serve the request. So like, you know, obviously in a production environment, you don't want to, or you won't uh, set up ADFS only on one server, rather than you will set up on multiple servers, at least on two servers, and you will place a load balancer in front of 
at which will give you a web virtual IP. Now that virtual IP is what that will get mapped to, uh, you know, this name which you see over here, right? So, <clears throat> so your web, you know, the web that you will get that will get mapped to this name. So your certificate when you're requesting any certificate from your, uh, you know, certification authority, this has to be for you know public. Um, uh, trusted certification authority your make sure that you know you're requesting it with the correct name otherwise if the name doesn't match that would fail now this certificate has to be installed on the both the server uh, on the federation server as well as on the web application proxy if you have two component proxying that uh, request to you so both the servers can use utilize the same certificate so you, you don't need to request multiple certificate you need one certificate uh, with you know the subject name of your form so moving on to the next one uh, this is uh, I stole this graphics from Microsoft website so obviously uh, it's out there on the public uh, what uh, Microsoft has done over here they have given you a very neat uh, uh, infrastructure you know very uh, uh, you can say it's an architecture blueprint for setting up ADFS in Azure so what uh, this deployment infrastructure that you see over here consists of two components right uh, so you have basically you have one DMZ uh, subnet uh, which which is where you will have web application proxy WAP which is you know the internet facing component of your ADFS which proxies any request coming from user, you know, if you have a user which is sitting over here. Right? So if I have any user which is sitting over here, that user will hit the VAP, uh, which is web application proxy uh, through a load balancer, or you know, indirectly you can see you're hitting it. And this guy over here, which is a web application proxy, uh, talks to your you know ADFS component in in this case you know it's running on a domain controller itself but uh, you know in your real world you can have it separated it out so the user doesn't so ex any external user they don't go and directly talk to ADFS server rather than it comes and talks to the web application proxy and that web application proxy securely communicates it with the ADFS server in the background and that ADFS server uh, you know will authenticate the user by talking to the domain control now when you have internal users right so this is th this flow you have seen it from the uh, you know external users so when you have internal users which you know on the left side which you see on the left side so you have your enterprise users like you know and then you have expressed out over here so in this case what will happen the in this internal user directly talks to the ADFS this user doesn't have to go through the web application proxy so because you know your user is sitting on prem they're connected to your carpnet and this is where you know they will have seamless sign on basically you know they will not even ask for username or password they'll automatically log in whereas if a user is coming from external you know they're hitting from outside of uh, your carpnet in that case you know obviously user will get authenticated but they will be asked for username and password and that goes through the uh, you know the web application proxy Right. Uh, so this is this is like you know how a typical ADFS setup would look like in production. So you will have uh, you know if I have to put in a firewall here. Then Niraj, this is with yeah. Go ahead, Vijay. Sorry, we lost you. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Neeraj. Please continue. We can hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you. We lost Vijay. Vijay had a question. Anyway, so, uh, you know, what you see over here is on the left side of this is your firewall, right? So in uh, uh, in Azure, if you have to set up a firewall, you know, you use NSG Network Security Group to configure that firewall. Uh, so your installation is going to be consist of like you know you will create two subnets and then you will have your domain controller sitting in your internal subnet so you will have two domain controllers and then you will have two web application proxy which is sitting in DMZ subnet 
and this these two subnets are separated by each other using network security group that NSG only allows port 443 from web application proxy to ADFS and it can only use that port to communicate none other ports are open and this guy has access to internet right but this guy over here doesn't have access to internet no access it's totally locked down because it's an internal network and obviously for security reasons we don't allow our uh, you know domain controllers to go out and talk to entities on internet so uh, this is this is like you know how a setup would look like and that's how you know you will set up in the real world uh, even on prem so like you know you see over here what you see over here is it is a depiction in azure but you know if your organization doesn't permit you to set up any domain controller or any kind of federation endpoint in azure in that case you can you can like you know move the entire setup back to on prem so you, even in on prem you can have like you know this could be your intranet and this could be your DMZ. So you put your component DMZ, come you know the web component DMZ, and your ADFS component on intranet, and then you open the firewall, firewall port 443. So though it's shown in Azure, you know uh, it, it, this setup has been shown to be part of Azure, but it, the same can be implemented even in on-prem also. So you know it's applicable at the both the places. Okay, I see BJ come back to you. Do you have a question, BJ? Yes, uh, I'm sorry, my session got disconnected. I rejoined now. No I had two questions here. When we talk about the certificate from the, uh, the external authority, mm -hmm. the name to match with my ADFS form name. Yes. So yes. are you saying that the, in the subject name should match with my form name? Yes, yeah, so you, you, you can have sub, anywhere you can put it. You can have in subject name or subject alternate name. Somewhere it has to be there. But you know, since in this case uh, you only have one name so you can use i would prefer it to be in part of the subject name okay so and the, the second question was uh, when we configure our ad connect and we use the automatic way to configure my adfs on azure yeah. does it configure my web application proxy as well or it's just yes, configure it will, the it will ask yeah. you both the options so you know it will ask you please specify so basically it will let you drop down and it will ask you the server name of your adfs where you want to install and then subsequently it will also ask you the web application proxy server name and this guy adfs has to be domain joined okay and this web application proxy has to be in work group Please make sure that so it will automatically configure my the network setting and all. Uh, no network setting you will have to configure. So for example, I'm talking about the firewall, right? You see the, this firewall over here. So this you will have to configure manually by going in NSG and allowing only you know port four four three from DMZ subnet to your internal subnet. So before doing okay. that you have to make sure that this configuration is already in place okay so the network setting and everything i have to configure first yeah okay. thanks okay. Neeraj, yeah i have a question so two subnets they will be in the private room, private side uh sorry can you repeat your question I was asking that we'll be having a public subnet and private subnet, right? So will it be private? Will it be? Sorry, I'm private sub. Yeah, so this is your I was private. To say that this is private. This is your public. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this the private subnet is doesn't have any access to internet. So like you know this, uh, which you see over here, this is not allowed. From public, it is allowed. So your web application proxy yep. will sit in public and your ADFS will sit in private and ADFS should be uh, joined to the domain. Uh, the, the web application proxy should be in work group. Yes. Okay. 
Yes, please. All right. So let's move on to, I think we have spent enough time talking. Maybe we'll get into the demo. So let's see. I have another slide, you know, probably we'll skip quickly through that. So that talks about, you know, how authentication works. So what do you see, you know, once you have your ADFS federation set up, so what will happen is you have intranet users and you have extranet users, right? So let's talk about the flow for the intranet user. So your intranet user is going to request a resource in, in Azure. So it could be a portal, it could be any SaaS service, it could be OT365. So what happens is when user goes uh, into the portal, you know, and uh, if you have configured your split uh, DNS, uh, so basically split DNS is, is what where you resolve the same uh, URL uh, differently depending on whether user is internal, whether user is external. So you will have same DNS zone configured on your internal DNS server as well as on your external DNS server. Internal DNS server will point uh, the IP of you know that URL to the internal ADFS server, the external DNS server, which you have bought, you know, from any of the third party provider will point to, will point your ADFS federation endpoint to the web application process. So, you know, uh, you will have same. So for example, if you, let's say if you have fs.abc.com, this will have two record, one record hosted in DNS on on internet and then one uh, uh, you know a host record hosted in dns in on premise so what happens is when a user hits it now obviously web application proxy will have different ip so if let's say if it has 1.1.1.2 ip and the intranet will have uh, let's say 1.1.1.1 ip so your dns and uh, we you know your this mapping this mapping the fs.avc.com will internal will map to the internal ip of the uh, your adfs server the external dns will map to the you know the external ip of this uh, of your fs.avc.com so basically what you see here is it's a split dns this this concept is called split dns now if user comes from internet uh, user goes in to try to access the resource in office 365 uh, you know, Office 365 recognizes or, uh, or say Azure AD authentication recognizes that, you know, we are set up for federation. So now what is the federation endpoint that Azure AD will send it to you? It will send it to fs.abc.com. Now, if you're sitting on-prem, your name resolution via DNS will happen to this internal IP. So basically, you will come over here to your ADFS, you know, authenticate, and then your authentication, your token goes back to the Azure AD. But if you're sitting outside, you know, on uh, you're sitting in Xnet and you're not connected to using any VPN, anything, you know, which gives you extension of your corpnet. So what will happen is the user goes over here uh, into Azure AD, try to authenticate, and then Azure AD says, "Hey, I need to since you're federated, I need to send it to you the federation endpoint, which is your fs.abc.com." Now this user, since this user is on internet, it will use this DNS server to resolve. Now this DNS server is configured with this host record of 1.1.1.2. So what will happen is this user gets redirected to the external web application proxy. So user, you know, talks to that and now this web application proxy will securely talk to your ADFS and then, you know, authenticate the user and then, you know, comes back and then this guy's, you know, send it over the token, encrypted token to the uh, Azure Active Directory. So that's how authentication works. So in a real production scenario, you will have split DNS. Uh, one DNS, internal DNS resolving to your ADFS server IP and, uh, a, you know, external DNS server resolving to your web application proxy. So, Neeraj, in the web application proxy server, what kind of ports do we need to open between web application proxy and my ADFS server? 443, that's it. Single port? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So that, that's a security point, right? That's that's the only point. So you can configure, you can lock it down that the ADFS can accept only connection on 443, that to only from the application proxy. Nothing else. Okay. So I'll move into the demo section. Uh, 
prior to that, I would, yeah. Uh, can you help us with the uh, how FTS application works? Sorry, can you repeat? I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat your question? FTS. Okay, STS, right? So uh, STS. Yeah, yeah. So they say like you know STS. Yeah. STS is the component of ADFS, right? So uh, you can say uh, service token, you know, site tokens services, which which essentially is responsible for creating the token and encrypting the token and you know sending it back to the Azure AD. So you know ADFS as a service has uh, one component which is called STS. Now that STS, you also have relying party. Uh, you know uh, there is a whole, uh, uh, if, if you worked in Active Directory on-prem, so you had like you know incoming trust and outgoing trust, right? Uh, or you can say that uh, a trusting trusting domain and trusted domain similarly in case of adfs also you have like you know relying party and then you also have somebody you know who provides your idp identity uh, idp now sts sits in between which creates a token for you and sts is a service which is which is part of adfs so it will talk to the you know domain controller Authenticate the user. If user is authenticated, it uses the attributes that you defined as a part of token, create that token, and then you know hand it over to the relying party. Uh, so before I move on to the demo uh, quickly, uh, I would like to point out the difference between the uh, Azure AD, uh, sorry, the ADFS SSO and pass through AD SSO. So in past, if you have seen my demo uh, in the session, I talked about the pass through. So pass through, the difference between pass through and the uh, ADFS, both, both are SSO. The difference is in case of pass through, the username and password both are collected by you know your Azure AD. So you know basically what happens your user is you know comes over here and it puts the username and password. This username and password you know it's collected by uh, AD Azure AD, and then it encrypts it and puts it to a service bus. If you remember we had a service bus. So from here and then you know your domain controller or Azure AD can it come back and read it. So your credential is in cloud. A lot of organization which they wouldn't prefer it even if it is encrypted service pass you know uh, before putting service pass uh, azure active directory encrypts it but a lot of organization they won't prefer it so in that case adfs comes into the picture so what happens in case of ADFS? so if i erase it so in case of adfs what happens is your user your uh, your user goes and talk to the azure ad but Azure AD doesn't ask for any password. The moment user enters username, the username, right, if it's coming from external, it recognizes that, oh, I see this, this uh, user is set up for a federation or this domain name of the user is set up for federation. So I need to redirect this user to the federation endpoint. Now, this is form-based authentication. Uh, this federation endpoint, uh, depending on if it is internal user or external user. So if it is external user, this federation endpoint will be your web application proxy. If it is internal user, your federation endpoint would be internal uh, ADFS server. So the user password is actually, you know, the user is entering the password on your server, the server controlled by you, rather than, you know, your password is sitting somewhere in service bus. So this is, this is the difference. Uh, you know, between the pass through and the ADFS. Yeah, because you know, I think they, uh, the people, they, 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 they do ask this question is, both provides the single sign on, which should I prefer one over another? Obviously, apart from ADFS infrastructure, uh, the technical, this is the key technical difference between uh, ADFS and uh, the pass through. Okay. Do, you wish, do you suggest to configure uh, AD Connect pass through mm -hmm. for the large organizations? Uh, you can. I mean, it, as I said, like, you know, if the organization doesn't have problem uh, in terms of like, you know, obviously we are not syncing the password, but 
where you are entering the user credential that's that's the key difference in case of adfs your credential is being put on to the portal of adfs whereas in case of pass through the authentication uh, the user credential is being put on azure ad it's collected by azure ad and uh, securely stored in azure service bus which is again on to internet Okay, so and can we have multiple AD connector connect server? Yes, in my organization for tolerance. Yes, you can have. Okay. Okay, so let's get into the demo piece. Uh, what I have done is. Uh, Yeah, so always the speed into the pass through will be more than the ADFS. Am I correct? Because user ID and password is cloud. Sorry, you said pa pass through. I was trying to say the speed into the pass through authentication will be more than the ADFS. Is it correct? The use you're saying or? I'm trying to say the speed. Just to think the time. Oh, speed. The speed. Ah. Uh -huh. I really haven't done any performance analysis between ADFS and SSO, uh, the pass through. So I can't really comment on that, but you know, I think I, it should be all over, you know, it should be identical, but I, I can't really comment on that on, in terms of the performance. Yeah, but one benefit of uh, pass through authentication is, uh, is that you don't have any infrastructure to maintain. So you're not responsible for high availability and you know sizing, server sizing of your ADFS, correct? In case of pass-through, it's Azure Service Pass, it's maintained by Microsoft, so pass offering, Microsoft will maintain and take care of that. Whereas in case of ADFS, you have your own infrastructure to, this is one of the disadvantage of ADFS, right? You'll have your own infrastructure and you have to maintain it, you'll have to patch it, you'll have to maintain the high availability of it. Whereas in case But of in case of pass through, don't we need to take care of the servers where we're going to install this AD Connect? So that's 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 anyway you are doing even in case of ADFS also. You need without the Azure AD Connect, even ADFS will not work. That's it, that's that's in the both cases, right? Yes. But in case of ADFS, you have additional servers to take care of. Got it. Right. So, okay, let's quickly go through it. So what I have done is I already have ADFS configured on this server. So, you know, obviously I know um, uh, ADFS installation in itself is a, is an entirely, you know, complete uh, session I can have, but uh, I can, I will share an article where you can follow that Microsoft has published that article, which you're using that you can, you know, set up your ADFS server. So what I have done in my case is I have this server which you see over here, wow, Azure ADFS one. Uh, I have not installed any web application proxy for simplicity's sake. So this is the server that I have configured, uh, you know, as a ADFS server and I have exposed it over internet using its public IP since it is in Azure. So I have its public IP, that public IP uh, is, is exposed to, uh, to internet as an ADFS public endpoint. Uh, so, I've already have, uh, you know, the ADFS installed on it. So what I will show you is, I will show you the uh, Azure AD Connect Pass, you know, the steps that you need to do. So if you have already installed Azure AD Connect, uh, you know, um, uh, you don't have to reinstall it. Every time if you need to make any configuration change, you just open the Azure AD Connect and from there you can uh, make those changes. And here's one question I have here. So you have joined this server to the domain wowazuredc.local? Yes, it is joined to a domain because it's a ADFS server, right? So, so you, okay, so you have provided the DNS for the wowazuredc, right? Yeah, so that you specify at the network layer, VNet level, so let me show you. So if I come over here, so this is my portal, right? On the portal, uh, so this is this is my VNet where I have my uh, this ADFS server sitting. And if you come to the property of that VNet, there is something called DNS server. Right? So if you look at the DNS server property, 
uh, you will see that you know by default Microsoft provides you Azure provided for DNS name resolution uh, but when you have your own domain controller you want to configure that IP so you select custom and you specify the IP of so this IP is of my domain controller so now what will happen is any server in this VNet uh, you know our subnet inside this vnet will make use of this uh, server which is a domain controller to name resolve to res resolve the name okay so that's how so any name resolution will go to this server and this service configured for dns forwarding to internet uh, to configure the you know to microsoft dns ip on the da on the dc so by this way we will be able to connect through outside as well yeah so I let me show you what I meant. And so here I have my AD DNS. So this is my uh, domain controller, which I have uh, running in here. And if I go into, let me open a sample console for you. So this DNS is configured uh, to forward it to the Azure uh, DNS server. Yeah, and it's done by Microsoft automatically when you install the service. Uh, it uh, configures them. So let me open this DNS first. And that's how it is resolving. So what will happen is any resolution for wow Azure.local will go to this. And anything other than you know wow Azure.local, uh, it will forward it to the Microsoft uh, DNS server. You see, okay, so let's see forward. You see this 168.63.2. This is uh, uh, DNS server of Microsoft. So have you configured this forward or it no, automatically? It, it automatically does it. Microsoft recognizes it, and you know when you install it, it does it automatically. That's the beauty. I don't know how it is done in uh, AWS, but in case of Azure, you just install it since it's a Microsoft product, Microsoft OS, Microsoft Image. Uh, it does it for you. Okay. Okay. So that's how the name resolution is happening over here. So let's come back to the this guy. Right? So in my case, as I said, I already have a ADFS setup. So you know, probably if I need, uh, I can uh, have a different session for ADFS. But so. What will happen is, you know, in case of if you already have your Azure AD Connect, you will uh, open the Azure AD Connect and this is where you will get the option. Uh, so you will select change user sign in. Now, you, you come over here and you specify your Azure AD credential, which is, you know, it's a normal thing. So let me type in. Uh, verifying my credentials now this is where you can see right so I mean in my case uh, earlier we had passed through authentication but uh, when you will do it you will have this option of you know federation with ADFS I already have set it up but you know I'll just show you I'll just walk through it uh, or, or it won't let me do that because I already have uh, so maybe I'll just revert it to pass through and then you know probably will come back to the Federation endpoint, but basically what it does is, you know, when you go with the Federation ADFS, it will ask you for your, uh, you know, um, Federation server name, uh, the IPs, and it will also ask you for, you know, all those details which is required for it. So in my case, I already have it set up. So let's see if you let me do it once again. No, so let me set up a pass through first. So that we can revert it back to Azure ADFS. So uh, what happens is, uh, maybe I'll just come back. So when you enable the uh, Azure EDFS, 
so your active directory or azure ad will get converted to the federated domain by default you know it's not federated and that setting can be seen into the in the properties of azure active directory so if, let's it come quickly and if i come to azure ad connect probably it has so you look at this red right, federated domain so right now it's showing zero because i changed it if had had it been uh, uh, set up as a federated and i'll show it later and when we set the federated it will get changed to one so which means you know it's, it's federated and you can see which domain it is federated with but uh, since i changed the status so you don't see the federated so let's come back to the edfs it's configuring uh, so right now I'm going through the pass through, right? So the user will get authenticated through pass through. And once it is done, I will quickly switch to ADFS to walk you through the entire demo. Yeah, Neeraj Priya said just for a minute I got disconnected. So we are using AD Connect, am I right? The screen which you are seeing it. Yeah. So anything you know, if you need to change the sign in process. Uh, from uh, you know same sign on to single sign on with uh, pass through single sign on the ADFS you will do through Azure AD Connect all those changes every time you have to come back to Azure AD Connect. Thank you. Mm It's going to take some time, let it run. I'll give me a minute, guys. And while it is running, I'll just take a quick bathroom break and back. They use for the proxy. Hey, then, bye. You had a question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A question uh, okay. regarding about the load balancer. You yeah. said the external load balancer, when you come out from the request come, coming from the internet, that's fine. So did you set any internal load balancer for the proxy? Uh, no, I haven't, but you know, you can uh, create a new load balancer and then you can specify internal or external. So when you create in Azure, since it's only one VM, what I have done is I have assigned a public IP to this guy. Now that public IP, I have allowed it to go out on internet. But you know, oh, I, I can show you quickly what I, but you know what you can do is, let's say if you have web application proxy and you have ADFS, so you can create two load balancer, one load balancer for in, which will be internal load balancer. So can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. I can. So when I create a load balancer here, it gives me two options, whether this load balancer is going to be internal or external. Uh, and this is what you see, public and internal. So you will create two load balancer, one for you know your internal one, and then you specify your ADFS server to be the backend, and you specify this is internal, uh, and you specify the VNet where you will place it. So I think my ADFS is in the VNet. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to change my subscription. Okay, why this question I raised? You said the proxy, the two proxies, yes, which can provide the authorization and authentication to the to the internal or external, yes, right? That's fantastic. But how can be its scalable capability on the proxy? If in case the uh, the threshold it started more than eighty percent continuously, if in case the performance will be lack the internal or external, right? So that's why I asked. There is no internal load balancer here so how the microsoft handle this traffic for the traffic is coming from internal and external oh uh, yeah you're so saying my setup if, or you're saying the setup that microsoft has set that's the common yeah, the microsoft yeah so microsoft has a you, load you, balancer you see can you see it yeah go ahead yeah, yeah. so microsoft has internal load balancer uh you know which it, which it has set up so this is your internal load balancer and this how the communication and this is our external load balancer and now you can scale, let's say you want to put the third one, you can put third one here also. So that's how you can scale up as much as you want. 
Yeah, got it. All right. Yeah, but in my case, you know, I didn't properly configure the entire setup. In my case, I only have uh, this is my DC and this is my ADFS server. Uh, yeah. And this ADFS uh, server has a PIP public IP. I don't have any load balancer. I can assign a load balancer, but you know, I didn't assign. And that PIP has been given a DNS level name. I have given a DNS name. So my um, federation endpoint name is the same name of the PIP. I'll show you what I meant. So let's come back. So we are here, right? Uh, so this is how you create the load balancer. So you one time will create an internal and that internal will get associated. Once you create it, you can specify your back in the loads. You will specify internal uh, for uh, your, uh, you know, ADFS server. And then, you know, you'll create another load balancer, which will be public, which is for, for your web application parts, which is the public. Okay. Uh, but in my case, I haven't done those kind of things, but I could do. Let's come, come back how I have done it. So if I come to my VM, this is my VM. And this is my ADFS. So any VM that you create in Azure, you, you get a public IP by default. And that public IP uh, by default, you know that we use the public IP uh, with the name, right? Uh, I mean, not name with the with the IP address which has been given, but the Microsoft allows you probably in AWS also will have similar feature where you can assign a name, a DNS name, to that public IP. So if you see over here, I'm looking at the network interface card of the that ADFS server, and this is the public IP. Right? This public IP either you can directly use this public IP, uh, but uh, this public IP is assigned dynamically. So if I come in IP configuration, uh, so let's come in IP config. So if you look at it, you know, this public IP, which is here is assigned dynamically. Uh, now, what happened is when you say, you know, uh, the assignment that you want to change uh, to start, you, you can also, you know, do in static uh, IP, but that will cost you more. Now you don't really want to spend that much money. In that case, what happens is uh, you can create a what I say is a DNS level. So let me come back here. If I come to overview, uh, this is the public IP. And if I look at the configuration. So you see the configuration is dynamic. Now this saves you a lot of money because you know the if you go with dynamic, it's only one one and a half dollar or so. But if you go with static, it's very expensive. I don't know the exact charges, but it's, it's only ten to fifteen times expensive. But what happens is when you have dynamic, if your server reboots, not that you reboot it from the operating system, you log in and you say restart, not that. But if you you know from console, if you restart it, this dynamic IP changes. Now, next time, if you want, if you are doing an RDP with this IP address, you will have different IPs. So to overcome that, what you can do is, you can specify a DNS name level. So what it is doing is, it's giving, a, it's a creating an, it's an A record in Microsoft DNS server uh, for this, uh, you know, name to and map it to this IP. Next time there is an IP change because you restarted the server, Microsoft will automatically update this IP and uh, your name, name is already there. So what I have done is I have given this, uh, you know, uh, static name to this dynamic IP. And that's how I'm able to, even if I restart, I have a script which I've configured to save money, wherein I, I now uh, stop all my VM in the midnight around 2, 1.30 AM, and then it restarts at uh, 7.30 in the morning. So I save cost. Uh, and if you do that, it changes the dynamic IP. It changes your IP. So you know, to f in order to uh, really, you need not depend on the public IP if you assign the DNS uh, uh, name level to that public IP. And that's what I have done in my case. And in fact, that is my the federation endpoint name is also wow Azure ADFS one dot uh, south central dot cloud app dot azure dot com. That's what is my federation endpoint name is.
but generally it's not a best practice to do in a production environment right no i'm doing it for demo <laughs> yeah and that's fine um, and then plus on top I, of the, the, i don't have access to production like azure subscription so i have my limitations <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's not recommended, and that's why Microsoft uh, gave you that configuration, right? Microsoft gave you configuration for internal load balance and external load balance. This is this is the appropriate configuration. All oh, the peering is happening here, so you have we have a load balancer, external load balancer. It's in a different segment, but this one, the internal network no, no, load balancer, is it's part of the it's part of the same VNet. Two subnet in the same VNet, so there is no peering. Okay. okay. But you have NSG Network Security Group to you know, safeguard, and I'll also come back to the NSG. So let's come back to the uh, how I've configured the NSG. So since this is the server which is going to be uh, in accepting the request from internet, so this is my NSG. What what you need to do is you need to allow incoming traffic to this. By default, it's only RDP, which is uh, allowed for inbound. Now, if I go in inbound, you will see that uh, by default, this you know RDP was there, but then I had to create one which allows all, and we can restrict it to the ATO 443 also. But you know, in my case, I just uh, set it for any to any. So uh, what it will uh, I show you. So uh, this is this is my you know the NSG network security group which is there. So I specify the source and the protocol. I could have restricted to TCP because it's HTTPS, but you know, because I just left it any. So you specify your source port range and destination port range. So uh, you can see 18443, uh, those things. But uh, for my demo purpose, I have just allowed everything so that it can accept uh, the request for authentication or remote people are hitting that uh, federation account. And that's what Microsoft. Uh, uh, configuration settings is talking about. In this case, your NSG, uh, right now the NSG that you have shown, uh, I have shown you, that was at the NIC level, uh, but the NSG can be also applied at the subnet level. So you will specify that NSG, the NSG that I have shown you, at the NSG, uh, at the subnet level. So in case of DMZ subnet, you will specify, or rather on the internal subnet, you will say that inbound is only from uh, subnet to 1443. Okay, so let's come back to the... You need one question for the load balancer, like uh, hardware load balancer kind of F5. Can we configure the SSL offloading as well in this Azure load balancer? Uh, you'll have to use application gateway. That's a separate session altogether, which I will have. <laughs> okay. so, load balancer here, Microsoft is layer four, and SSL is layer seven. Uh, you'll have to go with application gateway. Microsoft has something called application gateway layer seven load balancer that does SSL offloading, SSL pass through everything. Okay. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's come to Azure AD Connect once again. I know we have four minute pass, so I am hoping I can quickly finish this. Once this session is finished, I will just uh, post the ADFS configuration video for you. And if somebody wants to play with it, you can do it. Uh, but I didn't really want to waste a lot of time with people because it takes a little bit more time. So here I am, right? So I open the uh, Azure AD Connect now. You know, I'm configured for single sign on through pass through. Now we'll have to go to the ADFS. So I say change user sign in and I select next. Uh, specify my username. This is uh, global admin. Of my actually AD tenant. Hopefully, I type the right password. And before we 
configure this let's look at the azure ad status and what it says in federated it should say zero which means it's not configured as federated azure ad tenant yet and So uh, you can see right now it says zero. Okay. Uh, what else? So once we convert it to federated, uh, basically what happens when you do ADFS, it converts this domain, it has to be converted into federated and you will see that in the prompt. Uh, it, will, it will tell you that you know, it's, uh, it keeps converting it to federated. Okay, so here you have, so earlier I had the password authentication. I will say, uh, go ahead and configure with ADFS, which is federation, and say next. And this is where, you know, you can say configure a new ADFS form, and this is what I was talking about. If you don't have any ADFS form, you can say that, and that case what will happen is it will ask you for the uh, the PFX file, the certificate file that I had, I told you, you can, uh, you will have to have that SSL certificate with that and then you know browse it and it will go through all the process. But in my case, you know, I already have set up, so I will say use existing ADFS form. So basically, you know, I say use existing ADFS form. And then this is where you have to specify your server where you know the uh, your ADFS form is configured. So in my case it's Do you have external certificate from any authority? No, I generated a certain certificate, and that's why you'll see some error when we when we will try to authenticate. But that's uh, that's fine. Okay. So this is my server. This is the IP. I say okay, and I say next. You can create a self sign certificate. There is, uh, I mean, I, I have a series of, you know, links which I need to share with you guys. You know, after this video, I will publish this article in LinkedIn. Please read it carefully. I will publish all the links which I have used during this demo uh, you know, to set up my ADFS and also because ADFS uh, setup was not covered, right? I, mean, I didn't cover that. So that I will also publish it. Can we use make cert as well to create the certificate? Yeah, you can, you can. Okay. But in my case, I have used a PowerShell module, so I can show you quickly. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there is a link from that from that website. Uh, this is this is the code that I have used. If you download it, it lets you generate a self-signed certificate. I have installed this, and then I run this uh, PowerShell script, which uh, generates a self-signed certificate for you. Uh, so it's basically this is where you specify your uh, subject name uh, which is your, uh, your server name or the ADFS endpoint which is accessible from internet so in my case it's oh, azure.adfs and this is the uh, DNS level of the public IP that I have given to that NIC card okay and when you configure the ADFS uh, manually mm -hmm. I remember we need to configure some kind of rules in the relying party and the account will, provider side. It will, it will do it but if we use the, the Azure AD Connect, it will do it automatically for you. So right now I'm doing it manually. Those I will also show you that uh, that it will you now configure it for you. So you don't have to do it anything manually. Manual thing will come if you're using third party federation server. But since this is ADFS, it's Microsoft, Azure is also Microsoft, Azure AD is also Microsoft, Windows Server is also Microsoft, ADFS is also Microsoft, Microsoft gives you that seamless integration. <laughs> so now I have put in my enterprise admin credentials and it shows me my Azure AD domain that will get federated. And I say next. And it is, sorry, my session got disconnected. I asked one question. I'm not sure whether I was able to put a question. I answered that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, your, so your question, your question was that, uh, 
uh, you know we'll have to do manual relying party configuration and IDP configuration so I said that you know since Azure AD is Microsoft ADFS is Microsoft Windows Server is Microsoft Microsoft will do it automatically for you it will configure that uh, you know integration and I will show you that in console too and after this is done that you will see that the federation has configured the relying party with Microsoft Azure AD but if you had third party federation servers like SiteMind or other then in that case will have to do it manually okay thank you so let it run need a so ad can i can support multiple domains authentication uh no one one ad connect uh can only config can be configured with one domain you have to have multiple ad connect okay in such cases there is any limitation to you can use uh, microsoft identity manager mim actually azure ad connect is a smaller pair down version of mim mim does support multiple domains so you on one server you can have mim and you can configure multiple domain configuration but in in case of azure ad connect you will have to set up uh, multiple instances of azure ad connect for each domain So that could be the limitation. Okay, so with one, mm -hmm. sorry, so with one Azure AD uh, directory, can we configure two separate domains? Can we sync the identities from two separate domains? Uh, so, I mean, there is use case scenarios wherein, like you know, you can. Uh, so one Azure AD uh, can accept. The identity only from uh, one domain, uh, but uh, uh, I need to check. Uh, so th there is some limitation. So just I need to recall it. Uh, you can sync one Active Directory domain to multiple Azure AD. So you can have 10 Azure AD and your identity can be from one forest and that can be sent to multiple Azure AD. But it's not vice versa. No, but not vice versa. So you can't have one uh, Azure AD accepting uh, identities from multiple domains. That's not. So if in my organization, I have few domains, child domains and uh, root domains. I will not be able to synchronize all these domains in my Azure already. Uh, yeah, so you'll have to select one domain, right? So one one of the domain that you have to select. So where okay. the database is identities. Okay, so it says verify federation configuration, right? So it's saying you now it will try to verify the external and internal. In my case, it will fail. So uh, I will say I have created. If I say verify, it will fail because. Uh, but I know, you know, this name resolution is there. So if anybody hits it from the command prompt, if I if I do my NS lookup, I can can see that I'm getting this IP the public IP so it is resolvable so I don't need to really verify so I'll say exit now if I come back to my portal and let's refresh this guy and let's come to actually the connect This information can so let's see. Meanwhile, we can look at our ADFS setup. 
So we see ADFS, some errors, which is fine. Okay, here we go. So you can see now it's federated, right? It shows us federated domain as one. Earlier it was showing zero because you know we didn't have any federation at all. And if you click on that, I will show you that you know which domain is this uh, federated. So you see, like you know, this is my both the domains are federated. Now what I'll do is. Uh, let's try to authenticate but before that let's let's come back to the ADFS portal and I will quickly show you uh, what we were talking about so this is my ADFS console right which you see and if you come over into like you know the relying party trust and this is what uh, uh, you know, somebody asked this question so if you come into relying party trust you can see that you have a uh, uh, party which is relying on you for authentication is Microsoft Office 365 identity platform and if you click on that it will give you those uh, details about you know uh, where the relying party and this you didn't do it manually right it's all done by Microsoft if you had any other one then in that case probably you will do it manually and those stuff but here it is uh, everything is automated uh, you also have certificates. Let's look at the certificate that I have. So this is your service communication and token signing certificate. So the certificate, it's one single certificate which is used for both uh, for token signing as well. as. And you can see that uh, this is not trusted, I know, <laughs> uh, because uh, if you look at the certification part, uh, it's signed by Vow Azure ADFS itself. So it's a self-signed certificate and that's why it's not trusted, which is fine, you know, because I've done. So you can see those certificates here. Uh, if you look at the endpoints, this is where you will get to, you know, if, if somebody wants to uh, find out about what's your uh, token issuance certificate uh, or, you know, the endpoint, uh, this is your ADFS LS. So your server name, the complete federation endpoint slash ADFS LS. Uh, then this is your, uh, uh, the federation trust where which is the metadata usually that's that's how to check it this is the proxy one you know this this all you will use it uh, when you're setting up a federation trust within fabric but in our case you know we don't really need that because microsoft has already configured it for you now what we will do is and i will show you the difference so let's try to log in so i just open a new incognito window And I say portal.azure.com and I'll try to log in with uh, my on-prem user. So who is my on-prem user? Which is not one. Uh, Yeah, on prem was wow as your one, two, yeah, that's, right. Two. that's right, that's right. So, I'm just searching for that. Yeah, maybe I can look at the portal also. Uh, this is here. Where's my user? This is here. And all users. So these are source from one. So I'll use one. Well, I should use it too. So let's come here. And I say, well, I should use it to enter it cloudyz.com. Now, the moment I say that, see what it's saying, it's redirecting to an organization sign in page. If you read it clearly, it says sign in page. So it's taking me to my organization sign in page. Okay. Now you see my connection is not tied because my certificate. So what I'll do is I'll say in advance and this my certificate is self-signed certificate, hence it is saying you know it's not lost and all those stuff. But I'll say proceed to our Azure ADFS, uh, which is unsafe as per my and you see right, this is a signing with the organizational account, and you see this name, Wow Azure ADFS login, this is what I have configured. So this this is what tells me where I am. Look at this uh, URL. I'm here. I'm on my uh, ADFS endpoint and ADFS slash Alash. And if you come here, what was our endpoints? 
this was our endpoint, this is our login endpoint, alias slash rs, right? This is the endpoint that we're talking about. So one thing is for sure that you know, we're not going through the pass-through, we are directly authenticating against ADFS. Now uh, let's put in the password. And, and remember, this password, this is what the difference is. The password that I'm typing, I'm typing literally on the ADFS server. So it's not in cloud. The user is typing the password on my on-prem server if I had it on on-prem. That's one other difference. There you go. We're successfully logged on. Okay, so I think uh, I logged on and I logged on, you know, using ADFS Federation and we can verify once again. Oh, let's look at all Azure 2. And if I look at some of the activities, uh, sign in. I'll show you the sign in activity. Uh, let's pull in the information. So you can see that I logged in 36, uh, 9.3. Uh, here okay. well, but you know as you say that you know I have uh, logged in and I logged in using my you know, on-prem credential but the authentication has happened again the uh, actually ADFS uh, or the ADFS component which we're sitting on. Them. So that's it. That concludes the demo and the today's session. Any questions? So it's not a question, uh, Neeraj, but in the next session, can we try to configure one of any of the web application where we can um, configure the SAML authentication using ADFS proxy? Yes, certainly we can. I'm like, you know, I'll be more than happy to help if somebody volunteer. Maybe you can volunteer, I can help you set it up and I can demonstrate it. If that's fine with you.